Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be implementing spotlights. But first, let's have another episode of Benny is a nincompoop. Let's run our application for a moment. Now you see we got point lights, and they're working just fine. Here's the thing. Let's look straight down at the ground in an area where there's no point lights whatsoever. And all of a sudden, our frame rate is plummeting to 700 frames per second. What's going on? Before we added point lights, we were getting 3,000 frames per second when we were looking at that pyramid. And granted, a lot of that is because this takes up more of the screen, and with the pyramid, a lot of it was just black space. In fact, if I look in black space, the performance goes back to even better than that. It's at 3,200 frames per second. But, still, we shouldn't be getting 700 frames per second looking at the ground where spotlights aren't affecting. What's going on? And the answer is in our shader. If you look at our point light structure, for some reason, in the whole two-part segment where I was building point lights, I completely forgot to add the range parameter, which essentially it's some variable, which is the maximum distance that a pixel can be from the point light and still be affected by it. I don't know why I forgot it in the whole two-part segment, but I did. And that's why we're having that issue. Right now, our point lights are affecting every single pixel, even if they're infinitely far away. And while technically that's more realistic, no one's going to notice the difference in any way, so why bother? Now, before I do that, though, there's one thing I would like to change. I would like to make a very... Why is that... Okay. <gasps> I'd like to make a very small performance optimization. Because even if you get rid of the whole blank space argument, our point lights do cut our frame rate in half based on what it was before. And a very big part of that is we're calculating the maximum number of point lights even when those, there aren't even that many point lights in existence. So what we're going to do is we're going to detect if the point light that we're supposed to be calculating here, if that even exists, if that if there even is a point light to calculate. And if there's not, then we're not going to bother. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an if statement. And be very, very careful with if statements and performance in GLSL. GLSL has a very weird way of handling if statements, where sometimes it needs to execute both paths and then just select which result is correct. So, yeah, sometimes, a lot of times, actually, Doing an if statement can be even slower than just not having it in the first place. So be very careful when you do if statements in GLSL. I'm doing this because I have tested and measured it does indeed improve performance, and I'll show you that after this. But yeah, again, be very careful with this stuff. So anyways, if, we're going to say if point lights sub i dot base dot intensity is greater than zero. So if the intensity is how much a lighting effect it actually has. If it has any effect at all, only then do we actually add that to total lights. And with that, let's first off save and run. And is my video, yes, my video recorder, oh, maybe not? Okay, well, my video recorder isn't screwing me over. And you notice I can look at the ground now, and I can get about a thousand frames per second. I can look around, and yeah. I have much, much better performance with only one line of code. I'm not going to focus on performance optimizations until the whole segment on optimization, so that's why I'm not doing anything else other than this, but yeah, I just thought it would be worthwhile to go ahead and do that. And yeah, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's change our point light structure to be the way it was supposed to be in the first place, the one where it has some range of effect. So. I'm going to start this by going to my point light structure and adding some float for range. And again, this is just the maximum distance a pixel can be from the point light and still be affected by that. So with that, let's go down to the calc point light section and under distance to point, this is the information I need to determine if it actually falls in range and if I need to do anything else. So if and again, be very careful with if statements in GLSL. If point light, well, I'll, I'll do distance to point first, why not? If distance to point 
is greater than the range, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to return a vec4 of absolutely nothing. So that way, that's just t tells you how much effect it has. If it's out of range, then the point light can't possibly affect it. And there you go. So with that, that should complete everything I need to do in the shader, actually. So with that, let's actually go to the code. Let's go to point light. And let's create a private float called range. And yeah. So at this point, I'm just updating my structures. Nothing fancy here. And there. And of course, getters and setters. I'll shift F to generate getters and setters. At the very end, and there you go. So now point light's been updated, and it's working properly. And the only thing now is I didn't don't specify range, so I'm going to specify a range of two. I have no idea how well that's going to work out, but we'll find out. And with that, I just need to update that in the Fong shader. So Fong shader, and in point lights, I need to first off add a uniform. So add uniform point lights sub plus i dot range. And there we go, now we have that uniform. And now I should be able to just go into my set uniform convenience method for point lights and have a set uniform f for uniform name plus well I'll just copy this. <laughs> because I'm lazy. And I'll just change this to dot range. And then I'll just do point light dot kit range. And there. Now, let's see what happens. This may or may not work. We crash. Okay. So, I probably didn't do point light dot range, did I? No. I forgot point light dot range in the fragment shader. Now let's try. And hey, it's working. And it appears my recorder, even my recorder has decided to take. <laughs> oh dear! I think the range is just a little bit too small, so let's see what happens. As for the performance, that's either my recorder taking over my video card, or the if statement screwing me over. So let's change this to 4, let's see what happens now. And that's a little bit better. I think I'll try 6. Again, at this point I'm just playing around with the range and seeing what happens. But, um... And there, I think 6 is actually a very good amount. And I can look at my... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this isn't caused by the range, so... And yeah, you can still sort of see the edge, so maybe I'll adjust that a little bit more, but... Yeah, we'll see what happens. Anyways, I'm gonna turn off the recorder and just play around with this a bit and see what happens. See if there actually is a performance issue, or if my recorder is screwing me over. So, one moment. And, yeah, it was just my recorder screwing me up. So, now if I run and my recorder doesn't screw me up, hey, you notice we're getting a much, much, much better frame rate. Even if I'm looking straight at the ground where nothing's happening, we're getting 1400 frames per second now. We have literally doubled the frame rate with just a few minor changes to the code. And yeah, right now I have the range of the point lights set to 10. If that's not enough for you, if you like it less, you can adjust that. And again, feel free to just play around with the point lights. You can play around with the attenuation, especially the attenuation, and get some really interesting effects. So yeah. And at this point, I'm already nine minutes into the recording, so... I think I'm just going to go ahead and call this sort of a mini-episode. And in the next video, which I'm going to go ahead and record right after this, so hopefully it's going to come up pretty soon after this, in the next episode, I'm going to start implementing spotlights, like I said at the beginning of the video. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I hope you enjoy your spot or <laughs> your point lights, which now perform much, much better. And yeah, thank you, and see you next time.